All right, so we're back once again, and today we're going to be going over the 0, 0.9.0 update that's coming to World of Warships. It's the British cruisers, the British heavy cruisers, and they're in early access, so that means they're going to be coming the full line. I think the full line's coming out next um, next patch, but I'm not entirely sure. At least I, at least some of the lines coming out next patch, and you have a chance to get these. Uh, I think it's tier five to tier eight in. Um, in, you get early access to them in this patch. That being said, the patch is happening. Um, I'm recording this late at night, so I'm not really sure, and it's really close to 12 o'clock, so I'm not really sure uh, on your time zone, but if you go to the World of Warships website, you'll be able to, um, it'll tell you right at the top um, when the patch is actually deploying in your region and in your time zone, and what time that will be happening. So with that being said, let's actually delve into this a little bit. Obviously, British heavy cruisers um, are coming out. I haven't actually had a chance to look at them all that much, but um, yeah, so it's tier 5 to tier 8, earn early access for this patch. Um, you basically have to do directives, and then you get tokens, and then you can unlock them. You have a random chance of unlocking them. Based on opening, like, um, I think it's random bundles, but, you know, the, what's in the bundle is going to be visible to you, but it's going to be random chance. Um, to determine what's actually in the bundle every time you open a previous one, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but, you know, I said it anyways, so take that as you will. As I said before, you have to complete directives um, to get the tokens, British tokens, um, in order to actually redeem the bundles. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I could read out, you know, the random statements that they put on the website, like their guns can cause significant damage per salvo, but have a relatively short firing range and arc shell trajectory. But until I actually see these ships in in battle, it's it's completely meaningless. Um, um, maybe there's some aspects of this that I could actually point out. Um, like all researchable British heavy cruisers can choose between hydroacoustic search and defensive AA fire. But again, any kind of scrutiny would be like you would think basically AA fire in general right now is actually pretty garbage. So there's there's very few situations where I'd actually recommend taking defensive AA fire on any ship over hydroacoustic search. Now there, could, there, are, now there is exceptions to that, um, but in general, um, hydroacoustic search is much, so much superior. Mm, it has the Royal Navy heal, reseals, restores 50% of citadel, citadel damage as opposed to standard 10% for the ship. Starting from tier 8. Repair party, repair party store restores 2% of the ship's maximum HP per second instead of the standard 0.5%. Um, kind of the generic Royal Navy heal, not surprising all that much. Durable armor in the center part of their decks for tier 6 ships and higher give representatives of the new branch greater survivability in comparison to other cruisers. Okay, heavy cruisers, kind of expected. Unlike British light cruisers, the nation's heavy cruisers can use high explosive. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so they're, do so they're doing away with the gimmick of only having AP shells on British cruisers. Um, obviously, light cruisers are still gonna have them, but yeah, that's interesting. I would like to know um, what the fire chances and the alpha damage. But yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to say the least. Looking forward. Now that being said. Um, I don't know how hard the directives are going to be or how hard the grind is going to be because the, the patch hasn't actually been released yet. But generally these type of events isn't, it isn't terrible and I think each bundle is 20 tokens so I don't think it's going to be terrible. Um, that being said though, you know, we all thought that Puerto Rico wasn't going to be that bad but look what happened. Um, outside of that I can't think of much more to think about. Um, there's a little bit here on the tier 9 and tier 10 cruisers, the Drake and the Goliath. Um, I think their guns are buffed, they're, well, buffed relative to the rest of the line, as you'd expect. They have 234mm and high explosive shells that can penetrate armor up to 58mm thick. Ooh. I'm not knowledgeable enough on actual deck armor of other ships to actually see if that's good or not, but um, I'm sure after playing for a while, playing these ships for a little bit, I'll be able to make a much better judgement. Um, and the repair parties consumables are capable of restoring 60% of non-citadel damage, which yeah, is kind of useful. You'd, you'd expect that. It's Royal Navy heal. Um, 
But outside of that, um, maybe I, mm, again, you get tokens through directives, um, completed missions. Wait, is it only directives you can get tokens through? I know previous missions you were able to get them just from logging in. You get, you know, you get a small amount. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Hmm, that's kind of surprising. I'm sure you will. Um, you can get them from logging in directors, um, combat missions. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. But with that being said, it's going to be interesting to see how these actually fare relative to other cruisers. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more research on them. I'm going to watch a couple more videos of really high ranked players and then make my determination. Um, I'm also going to play a couple of games, obviously, but until then, I don't want to comment any more on the British cruisers coming into the game. That being said, let's look at the clan battles, Sea of Fortune. I've had the. I've, I've played one season of clan battles, I think that was the most recent season, and it's actually a lot of fun. Um, a 7x7 format with a bunch of people on Discord are incredibly good fun. Um, so I really like this. This time they're going to be tier 10 ships in a 7x7. Um, restrictions are a maximum of one battleship per team and no aircraft. Oh, that's actually. Hmm. One battleship's pretty interesting to say the least. Um, hmm, I don't know really what to make of that. I don't know how that's going to play out. It's going to be really interesting though because I think previous seasons we were allowed two or three. I know a lot of times I played the Thunder a hell of a lot. Um, mostly because I just think it's a better conquer, but I'm pretty sure we had other battleships too. So maybe maximizing it to only one battleship is hmm, pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, rewards up to 11,000 steel and then many additional rewards. Again. As you'd expect, you get steel for clan battles and ranked. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and snowflakes, obviously, but I think that's the only way you can get um, steel. Which is a bit sad for people that don't have clans or, you know, don't enjoy ranked, but it is what it is. And then you have just a list of maps. Um, a cyclone is guaranteed to appear on each of the following maps. Mountain Range, Land of Fire, and North. Why? Why are they trying to introduce... This just seems like trying to force something that isn't actually um, enjoyable and isn't actually needed in the game into the game. There's no reason for Cyclones to exist. It basically just makes DDs and kind of cruisers almost ineffective or ineffective, I, I find. Because if you get in within 8 kilometer range or something, like. If I'm playing the Thunder and a DD comes within 8 kilometers, he's going to not exist in like 0.1 of a second. But again, <clears throat> it plays into the wheelhouse of the bigger ships, the stronger ships, the tankier ships. But we'll see how it plays out. Again, this hasn't happened yet, so I'm always I'm always being very tentative on how I actually, you know, how I actually see this is going to play out. But that being said, cloud battles are usually always good fun because you're playing within a team and it's, you know, it's just a bit of fun. It's not a professional scene or anything, so. That being said, unique upgrades. Um, this actually stirred up a lot of controversy, especially because it happened not that long after the Puerto Rico, where people were talking about how unique upgrades for ships were going to move to the Research Bureau. Um, um, as the opening moved towards the changes that have been promised for unique upgrades, we've updated the, we updated the way in which they are obtained with the release of 0.9.2 unique upgrades will appear in the research bureau tab of the armory the challenges and combat missions for unique upgrades will also change so you can still get them until the release of 0.9.1 and if the combat missions already obtained prior to this point will expire on the 31st of December wait so if you wait so once you've already gotten they're going to take them off you and put them in the research that's interesting. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, that's horrific. Um, I don't really need to. I don't think I need to make um wait until um, wait wait and see. Oh my god, I can't even get the words out. I can't. Um, I don't need to wait and see to see how this plays out. It's it's. It just feels like they're just taking more and putting it further behind like a grind wall. Um, the fact that you already have to research 6 tier 10 ships just to get access to the um, research bureau is insane. Um, maybe this means they're going to make it 
going to remove that restriction, but I can't see that happening. They'll probably just add the research bureau for everyone, and then when you unlock when you unlock six ships, tier ten ships, then extra parts of the research bureau where you can grind for the, like the Ohio and stuff like that will open up. Um, but yeah, it just feels so bad. Okay, so event content. Um, ships dedicated to collab collaboration of the Arpeggio of Blue Steel are becoming premium ships. Okay, that's pretty that's pretty nice. So if you have any of these ships already, they're gonna be coming premium ships and you get a free permanent camp. I don't know mm, I don't know if it's gonna be free, but I'm guessing it's gonna be free. So you get a perma permanent camo and more credits, which is eh, nice. It's always nice to have. And then Lunar New Year. On the occasion of the Lunar New Year, we've added some flags, patches, permanent camouflages, and commanders. We did de dedicated article on how to obtain them, as well as new ships. The Wukong, the Beige, and the Silly Wangi. What a name. Anyways, that's kind of... I haven't played IGM DDs, so it doesn't really apply to me, but it's always nice to see new ships getting, you know, getting... I kind of see this as a buff, to be honest. Getting a perma camouflage, you know, it it kind of makes newer players, it eases a burden for newer players who just kind of get credit, trying to get credits and XP and stuff like that. So that's always good to see. Now, the one last thing I want to actually look at is balance changes, um, and I'm going to focus on. I'm just going to read through them. Um, again, these aren't. I haven't played these yet, so I'm going to take take everything I say with it grain of salt. Um, so let's actually go through these. German tier 10 cruiser Hindenburg. The reload time for main guns has been reduced from 10.5 to 9.8. So that's 0 0.7 seconds. Which... Uh, it feels like that's... I don't want to make a big bold statement. Um, but it feels like Wargaming is tending towards a lot more of an arcade style of game. Where everything's decreased. Everything's lower cooldown. Everything's more fiery, everything's more HG. Um, that feels like the direction they're going in. Now, it, I might be wrong on that, but um, how this is going to affect the Hindenburg overall, I never really saw the Hindenburg as like a spammy ship, so I don't know how, th I don't really see it as being a massive change, but um, we'll see how it plays out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, that said, American tier 10, tier 10 battleship Montana, the amount of HP restored by a repair party consumable has been increased from 0 0.5 to 0 0.66 to the maximum HP pull per second. Um, wait, so it's not actually it's not actually going to change the maximum HP pull repaired. It's just going to change the rate at which. Um, again, yeah, that's just the parameters of the Montana's repair party are now equivalent to those of the same consumable on other researchable U.S. battleships. So just taking it in line with other battleships. So again, not that much of a major change there. Soviet tier 10 battleship, the Kremlin. The HP pool of her AA modes has been reduced by half. Um, in addition to her good armor and large HP pool, the Kremlin has high efficient AA guns which were previously too hard to destroy. This meant that the battleship was able to enjoy solid protection against aircraft for the duration of an entire battle. The change will make it easier for aircraft carriers to attack the battleship in the middle stages of a battle, at the point when some of her AA modes have been destroyed. The less said about that, the better, because that makes probably no difference at all. Um, European tier, tier 7 destroyer, this, I, I can't even pronounce that. The horizontal aiming angles of our main guns have been extended on both sides. First turret by 10 degrees, second turret by 1 degree, fourth turret by... I don't play this ship, so if this is meaningful or not, I'm not entirely sure. But again, um... Higher firing angles is always, or greater firing angles is always, always nice. Um, regardless of the ship, it's it's uh, objectively a buff, like in every aspect of the word. Um, French tier three destroyer the Fusilier, HP pull of a standard hull has been reduced from 9,300 to 7,900. Her HP pull of a researchable hull has been reduced from 10,900 to 9,300. Tier three, nobody really cares. Um, French tier 9 destroyer Mogador. The ship's detectability range has been increased by sea from. Ooh, by 500 meters! That's quite significant, actually. That's actually quite significant. That's. 
basically the size of the um isn't the um the uh, camouflage for ow oh, isn't the camouflage for reducing the uh, for reducing ship's concealment i don't know if it's 10 percent or five percent but if it's five percent that's basically the camo taken out right there which is really interesting um yeah, that's really interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And by air from 4.3 to 4.5. Well, that's not going to make all that much of a difference because generally aircraft move that fast. So if if aircraft are at 4.5 kilometers, the way, I, the way I think of it is that if aircraft are at 4.6 kilometers away from you, they're probably going to get to 4.4 or 4.35. So it's not going to really make all that much difference. Um... A 200, uh, so about 300 meters added to our main guns and smoke, which isn't insignificant, but again, if you're in four kilometers, you're probably just, you're probably going straight at him and you're going to get detected anyway, so uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. The tactility range of our DPDs have increased from 1.4 to 1.8. That's, you, you don't really use French DDs for their torpedoes, but again, um, I suppose it helps out battle ships a little bit, but again, you're not going to be using them all that much for actual torpedoes. They're generally gunboats. French tier 10 destroyed the Kleber. The ship's detectability range has been increased from 8.8 .8 to now. What? A kilometer? 10 kilometer detectability? Ooh, that's, that's brave. Um, yeah, that's huge, actually. So that means it goes from 9.8 with the camo. I don't know how, yeah, obviously you're going to have concealment expert and everything um, tossed on top of this. So, this isn't obviously the final number. But adding a kilometer is huge. It's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Again, Colbert is a really strong DD, so... Um, yeah, maybe this, maybe this actually ends up just dragging them back in line with other DDs, or not. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Um, the fr and to, to finish it all off, the French Tier 10 cruiser, the Henry the Fourth. The time it takes for engine to reach full power has been increased. The acceleration parameters of the engine boost consumable activated have been changed. Why don't they say what the changes are though? That's really interesting. Due to our engine boost consumable and high standard speed, the Henry the Fourth was able to avoid enemy fire by reducing or increasing her speed, allowing the ship to accelerate and start more smoothly. With engine boost activated, her acceleration will be approximately the same as her standard acceleration, without the effects of the consumable prior to the change. Okay. Okay, so the engine boost just takes her back to base Henry right now. Um, yeah, as long as they don't, as long as it's not too drastic, you don't want to rail. You don't want. You don't want to be trying to stop, and then you. Uh, suddenly your French Henry the fourth is basically like the Minotaur where it takes half 15 miles just to make it stop um, But yeah, lots of nerfs for French ships, which is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know how this is gonna play out for the Hindenburg 0 0.7 seconds isn't all that mm, massive I don't think it's gonna affect the Kremlin or the Montana all that much um, I don't play European tier destroyers, so I'm not gonna comment on that all that much Although it is an objective buff. Fuselier, tier 3, nobody really cares. Um, adding the de detection range to these ships is probably going to be... Going to take a bit of an adjustment from play cell, but... Um, we'll see how it plays out. And of course, the Henry the Fourth acceleration has been changed significantly. So, again, lots of different little changes. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm really looking forward to actually wa um, playing the British cruisers. And uh, yeah, so until then, I'll see you in the next one.